everyone. Um, today we are going to learn on how to produce axonometric drawings from the autographics that you have previously learned. Um, we are going to do this step by step, but before we begin, just a quick introduction of what, on what axonometry actually means. Now there's a comparison between isometric and axonometric drawings. What we're going to focus on today is to produce axonometric drawings and there are basically two types. The first one would be uh, based on 45 by 45 degree and you can see in the, the slide shown here uh, that we have um, at this corner a 45 degree angle and a 45 degree angle. So that's what we call in short, axonometric 45-45. And the other axonometric would be a 60-30 or 30-60, where you can see there's a difference, an unequal um, uh, degree uh, to, to the reference line here. So what we're going to do um, I'm going to demonstrate both of these. Very uh, simple. Um, it's not as complicated and, uh, as it seems. Um, it is actually the idea of axonometry is to produce um, a 3D view of uh, an object that you will uh, produce from the floor plan that you have. We are not going to use isometric because our floor plans do not have uh, an angle more than 90 degree inside. What we do have is that uh, typically our floor plans have a 90 degree reference at the corner here. All right, so that's why we are going to explore these two forms of isono uh, isonometric. Oblique is also another form of producing um, 3D, but we're not going to uh, dwell on that. Uh, it also looks a little bit more distorted and less um, uh, lesser on the interior being exposed. Uh, with isonometric, you can actually see more of the interior uh, from above. Okay, so let's just jump right in. Now, step one. Um, this is the first step out of the seven steps that I'm going to demonstrate. The first step is to set up. Um, you have to choose to either use a 45-45 for your drawing or a 30-60 or 60-30. Once you have decided which you would use um, to show uh, the interior of your building in 3D, this is how you will set it up. Now with the floor plan that you have, depending on uh, the view you like to have, um, from where I am standing here, I'm looking more at the furniture of the, the, the built-in of the kitchen. So I intentionally want the plan to be placed in such a way. But if I want to project more on the, the toilet, for example, I would maybe want to tilt it this way and I'll be able to project more of the, the toiletries. But with the proximity of the wall this close, your wall may very well uh, block the view of this uh, shorter toiletry or fittings. So where you decide to project um, what, what is on the plan, will dictate how you want the plan to be placed, whether this way or this way. Okay, this is an example on how you can set up your drawing. Firstly, the plan that you have will be taped on the board. But before taping it, you must make sure that the corner in which it meets the straight line here makes a certain a specific degree. So for this axonometric, this is a 30 degree and this is a 60 degree. Now to make sure you get this accurate, first you have to lay out your T-square on a board, pull it down, 
and this will be your parallel horizontal reference to start measuring the degree that you are going to use. So now making sure the point here meets this line and then you could use this ruler. This is a 30-60 ruler, it looks like this. In contrast to a 45 degree ruler which looks like this. This is a 45 degree, all 45 degree ruler, okay. This is a 60, so you can see a very long end here and a shorter end here. So in order to get a 30 degree, what you do is you slide this on top of the T-square and you allow it to meet the corner of this floor plan. And there, you would have the wall line aligned with this 30 degree. Now to double check and make sure the other side is 60, you do so by turning this ruler around like this. Slide it on top of the T-square. So the T-square is your main reference point at all times to make sure that everything, even your 60 degree and 30 degree is actually referenced to this line. Okay. Now slide this over and you'll find that the wall is actually aligned to this 60 degree. Then there are many ways to achieve this 30, 60 degree. You could use a protractor to do it, like so. To check the 30 degree or the 60 degree. And some of you may even have this kind of protractor, the rounded ones, here. And this, in this way, you could also check that you get a 30 degree here and a 60 degree here. And once this is set up, just make sure you tape the plan correctly in its place before we set up our A3 tracing paper. Now I'm going to attempt to um, place this plan at a exonometric 45-45. So for 45 degree angle, um, you place uh, the plan like so with the corner facing downwards and you push up your T-square to meet the corner. Okay, once you have done that, you take a ruler with a 45 degree angle and just slide it across like that. Now you just have to make slight adjustment to make sure that it aligns with this ruler here. Okay, this looks right. And once you do so, you find that the wall should align with the ruler. And you want to secure this plan in place. Okay, now there you have your plan ready. You can start your axonometric setup. Secondly, you would have to place the tracing paper on which you are going to draw on. And this is how you will do it. Now, the next thing you want to do is to set up your A3 tracing paper like so. Firstly, um, it is important to check that your A3 paper is parallel to the board and it's straight, just for good measure. So th the reason why is so that whatever you project is going to be straight and parallel to the layout of this tracing paper. And another thing you need to check is to make sure that the tracing paper actually covers the extent of this plan. Whatever plan you have in hand, just make sure that it is covering the plan. And once you have done so, um, make sure you have the tapes taped properly on the edges to pro avoid the tracing paper from sliding up and down or even budging a little bit as you uh, project. So make sure the masking tape is secure in its place before you start. And then thirdly, 
extending the vertical lines from the floor plan that you have uh, placed on your drawing board. And uh, you could either do this concurrently with uh, scaling and measuring the correct height of walls, or you can first extend the vertical lines and then you scale and measure the correct height of walls. Now to begin with, just make sure that you're using a very sharp pencil. Unless you are totally confident, you can start with pen right away, but I would suggest if you're doing this and attempting this for the first time, um, let's just go with pencil. Now what we're going to do next is to project the plan into uh, a 3D. In order to do that, we will add height to these walls. We'll start with the wall at the front here this wall that's facing us, and this wall. Now both of these walls have a certain height. You have to refer to the elevation drawings. And let's just say the elevation shows it that it is 4 meter in real height. You have to then scale it to the drawing, um, the drawing on the scale. And let's say if this is 1 to 10, that would mean that your 4 meter height wall is actually 40 mm. Now I'll just go ahead and draw and project this wall from the corner of this wall here, this corner, and I make sure I draw a 4 meter line to scale. And I'll do the same for the next corner here and draw a 4 meter line to scale. And I'll repeat that at the furthest end here, a 4 meter height to scale. And finally, after projecting all the vertical lines, you would then join the vertical lines at either 30, 45 or 60 degree, depending on the choice of axonometric you choose to um, illustrate. What I would do next is to join these lines, the top of these, to make the plane. Now you can be very um, casual about this by joining the lines just uh, using a ruler, okay? Or you, you, if you want to be precisely sure, I suggest you go with a T-square and then you lean your 30 degree ruler on the T-square. then make sure that the top of this wall meets the other top of the wall and you slant it at a precise degree here like so that way you make sure that this line to this line is actually a perfect 30 degree and as you can see here the height of this wall here did not meet the line that just means that what I did earlier is that I did not uh, have an accurate 4 meter height. So, this is a good way for you to cross check. Okay. And I'll repeat the same for this side of the wall. Now, this side, bear in mind, is 30 de uh, 60 degree. So, I would have to tilt my ruler like this and slide it across all the time making sure that T-square is uh, leaning against the board and I'll draw the line to meet the other wall. Now that I've completed the first two planes facing me, I would then proceed to draw the inner side of the wall to make the wall look like a 3D because every wall has a thickness. Right now I've just completed the plane I'm going to go ahead and do the inner side of the wall so to make this look like a 3D. So I repeat the same process except that this time I'm taking the reference from the inner corner of the wall and take a 4 meter height to scale and just mark it there. I do the same 
for this end and I just mark it there and for this side here I take the inner side of the wall note we're trying to make a thick a wall with a thickness here so we take the inner side as a reference slide this t-square across and get a 4 meter height to scale mark it there okay and then the next thing we want to do is again do a 30 degree reference by, by doing this okay and then you slide it across to ensure that the two points meet done with the thickness of the wall. I'll just casually join these lines together. And you see okay, that you have formed a thick wall. Now this is only the two front wall. We also have to proceed to do the back wall. And we repeat the same process. But bear in mind that um, the walls that are on this side and this side would be at a 60 degree and the wall on this side and this side would be slanting at 30 degree. Now once you have done so, you will find that you have created a box. Now don't forget the floor line as well. All you have to do is just trace the floor plan but bear in mind, what you see is supposed to be on the inner side of the wall. So you only reference to the inner side of the wall to create a floor line. To continue on with the rest of the walls inside. Now the reason why we start with pencil is because you ultimately find that you need to project another wall that will cross path and once you have projected all the wall lines from the inside you start to form a lot more um, walls in between the second last step uh, actually is to produce uh, and project doors windows and furniture within the walls that you have drawn the other way to do a wall or a projection of uh, windows and doors with a height is that you could just draw reference lines first, like this. I'm doing the windows now, so I'm just projecting the vertical lines as reference. So once you have all the vertical lines drawn, you can then measure according to the elevation. So say the windows are actually a one meter above the floor line. So I'll put a marker here and a marker here and then I'll join them. but I have yet to do the, the inside of the window. So for door, it's the same principle. After doing the vertical line reference, I will then make sure that the height of the door is correct, which is roughly at about 2.4 or 2.5 meter. Put a marker there. and then I'll join them. So you have to refer to the height of these doors and windows um, back at your elevation just to make sure that it is correct. All right. And I'll like outline this like so. Another tip about outlining with a pen while you're doing it is to put coins, uh, take the coins at uh, the bottom of this ruler just so that it is lifted from the board and you won't 
have any smudging when you pull the ruler away. So I'm going to project the, um, the inner wall and put a marker there. And make sure it's at a 1 meter height from the inside. And the same for the door. I have uh, the door panel on the outer side, so I'll just project the door panel line. So I'll just quickly do an outline for your reference. Typically we do the outline much later um, after the whole drawing is done. Now what I'm doing here is drawing the inner line of the window and I've created an opening. But bear in mind um, uh, there's no window in the Farnsworth house. So that's probably curtain wall that you're going to draw. Um, but this is the principle. And finally, we are going to do outlining on top of the pencil marks that you have uh, created. And with this, uh, you need to use a different pen thickness. And uh, you would use different pen thickness for different areas that you want to illustrate. So this was the assignment that I did for Villa Savoy and uh, we did an exploded uh, drawing for the house and we actually have um, all the layers peeled out but for fonts worth um, you are only required to show the floor plan and you do not have actually sufficient space as you can see uh, what we drew was on an A2 paper A1 actually um, but because we have only A3 right now, you're only required to do the floor plan and uh, show the details. Um, pretty much like this one here, where you uh, reveal the doors and the furniture. And if you look closely, um, we have the details drawn in a much thinner pen. And uh, you are not required to explode the show the roof or explode it in any way so it's probably much simpler but it does uh, require a lot of patience along the way now that was a seven step guide to produce um, an exonometric whether it's 45 45 or 30 60. now for the sake of our practicing we will all do and produce a uh, this uh, 3D as illustrated here um, with the dimensions in centimeters. Um, you are to show your tutors in the tutorial later on um, how you have produced an exonometric 4545 and 3060 based on the given dimensions for the object below. Now for project 2C, uh, you all are expected to produce an exonometric whether in 45, 45 or 30, 60 um, based on the floor plans that you have drawn for project 2B, the orthographic exercise. Now using the floor plan of the Farnsworth house that you have produced, that would be your basic reference to produce the exonometric of Farnsworth House. If you have any question, do uh, proceed to your tutorial groups and ask your respective tutors um, how to set up or uh, adjust uh, the width and length of um, your exonometric. Uh, if you have any difficulty in um, trying to fit everything within the A3 size. Good luck and have fun!